All right, let's take a look at where we left off. So we have our um, essentially pretty much looks like 75%, if that's not an underestimate of our oven done. So let's go ahead and knock out this handle here. So I'm going to delete half. And for this, is this actually is a pretty good candidate for uh, an automatic unwrap and a weld. So let's hide everything but this. And let's see what it gives us. So I'm going to go to the UV editor and then do my automatic. Oops, I forgot that I actually added it up here. So that actually gave us a really good um, unwrap. But what we know, if we analyze this, is we want all of these faces here to either this to be treated like a box or these need to be in a sequence or a line. I'm going to go with the box technique and the reason for that is because when you have something that divots up like this, like it has a change in the shape, it's kind of jagged because of the way that this is smaller, this handle gets thinner. It gives you it doesn't give you a straight um, a straight line. So I'm going to treat this like the plane change method. So with that said, um, since you're not going to see this inside part, I'm going to delete that. But I'm going to go ahead and um, shift right click just on this handle here. I'm hitting F to focus because it gets annoying. Shift right click, go to mapping. And I'm going to planar map this on Z. UV mode. And I'm just going to unfold that. And what you'll see is it unfolded that nice and clean and perfect. Now these, let's see how this turns out. So these here, these faces like this, um, look pretty good. It's just this, this one here needs to be move and sewed. So let's do that. And let's go ahead and move this over. And I'm going to unfold that. Looks pretty good. So that's not too bad. So let's just sort of line this up a little bit here next to that. Um, this top piece really doesn't necessarily need to Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and unwrap. This is really a box here, now that I'm looking at it. Um, this is a box. And this could really be its own section, this inside here, these two pieces. So let's let's treat it like that. Because it, it actually kind of gave us what we were looking for. Do you see how it sort of already, it saw that it was unboxed and it put it together for us? So all we need to do is find, well, what's, what's going on with this edge here? This edge here, there you go. And we can just move and sew these. Yeah, so if I move and sew that, and then I do the same thing to this other side, you can see that we actually have this thing here. And then let's see how it looks when we unfold it. it looks pretty good. So yeah, that, that kind of took care of itself. And if you're not sure, you're like, what the hell did he just do? It's really this, right? This is the backbone, that center piece, and these two side pieces come out like wings. So that's a completely acceptable way of doing it. And then these inside pieces here can just be um, sewn together. God, this is, it's hard to navigate. Uh, sometimes, let's hit F to focus on that edge. There we go. So let's move and sew these. And let's do the same thing here, no here. There it is. That's what I'm looking for. Moving so. And I'm going to rotate that. And there is our handle. All right, so let's select this with this. And because it's fairly small, and um, what I'm going to do for this is uh, to UV shell this, scale this down a bunch, and I'm just going to slide it right next to this, this little box here. And for in respect to the texel density of this, which is really how big the texture size is, and I can surely do that with the grid. I want to make sure that, actually let's stack this here. It'll make this a lot tighter. Kind of take advantage of that little part there. And if we look at it, it's going to be off. Um, I know, but like I'm sort of looking at it 
living in between the world of a perfect world of unwrapping and trying to optimize this for a game engine, which it's sort of like money versus, you know, and it doesn't look bad. I mean, these in here are too small, but I, if I'm not going to print anything and it's going to have a solid shader, it won't look too stretched. All right, let's finish. Let's see, we got this back piece here. Um, and the top of this fridge is going to be, um, or the top of this fridge, gosh, I just finished doing the fridge. The top and bottom of this oven is going to be deleted because they're covered. See that? So let's hide this. And what I might do is let's look at a new tool. So if we go to our mesh tools up here, there is, let's see, there's our multi cut tool. And I think there is. Let's see, we might use multi-cut, but I thought there was a slice, and I, my brain could be going between 3D Studio Max, Blender, and Maya here. But I could have swore there was a slice tool. So let's see. I might have to compare with the Googles. All right, I am not going crazy. There was a slice tool, but it's a little different now. They've incorporated it into the multi-cut tool. So let's see, mesh tools, multi-cut. And what I can do here is click up here, go to my front view, make sure that that's sort of lined up. Um, actually, I don't think we even need to. Let's see, so if I click down here, you can see, maybe if we click here and then here, there we go. And then I hold my middle mouse. Yeah, that's right. So let's add another cut back here. Let's go to our front view. Can I slide that around? Yeah, I guess I could slide these points. Let's slide all these points over. I'm clicking my middle wheel here, by the way, as I move all these points. I wonder if I could select all that. And that doesn't really matter. And then I press enter. Yeah, look at that. Sliced it. And I'm going to go to face mode. Oops. Let's hit escape to get out of this. Or maybe go to object mode. Yeah, and then go to face mode. Let's delete. What is with? Oh, W to get out of it. Okay. Let's delete half of this. Then I'm just going to go to vertex mode. Select all of these verts. And let's see what happened here. Wow, look at some ugly cutting there. But there we go. trying to clean this up a little bit. Wow. Let's actually do that. Let's do a better job of that. That is weird. Okay. Um, when I was moving those around with the middle mouse. All right. Let's try that one more time. So uh, mesh. Let's see. Multi-cut tool. Maybe if I click up here. Yeah, there we go. And then I click all the way down there. Hit enter. Look at that. All right, so that's the better way of doing it. So let's go ahead and hit W, select all those faces, delete them. Now this is a box, but what's nice about this is we don't need these top faces. So let's delete that. And we don't need these top faces. Let's delete that. And then UV mode. Oops, we never even... Mapped it on Z. So mapping, planar map Z. UV mode. Let's double click this. Now, if it stretches a little bit here, uh, we might have to do something a little creative. Yeah, so see how it's kind of flipping out there? Watch what happens if I get rid of this edge. So if I hit Shift X here and I try to re unwrap this, you'll start to, it'll start to shift a little bit. See that? And another thing that we can do is it doesn't like, I can see it's not liking that inside face is being attached and that's because it's billowing out here so if i click this edge and i just kind of go around my model and i hit shift x watch what happens when i remove this inside chunk right that's the glass and i hit unfold it straightens itself out so let's leave this so i'm going to move in so that and then if i click this it should retain that shape when I unfold it. There we go. 
And then with this, all I'm going to do is same thing, unfold it. It's still kind of like billowing out. We, we want to get as close to a box as we can. So watch what happens when I cut where my plane changes are. So here's one plane change. Here's another plane change. So let's try it with just these two plane and leave this as its own. And then let's hit unfold. Boom. See how it starts to straighten out? And actually, that's a really good, that's very straight. So I'm going to try to scale this up as much as I can to fill that little section. All right, so I've got this, I've got this. Let's go ahead and combine all those pieces. I'm really up to here at this point. In all honesty, here's another key area. This face, if it's not going to um, really be much different than this one, I'm just gonna grab it, just drop it on top of here. I'm being a little bit too, um, To what's it called? Liberal, I should say, with the UVs. So let's go ahead here, scale this front face down. And in all honesty, I'm going to move this a little bit here because it's it's in the center and these should really be off to the side. So something like this. Control right clicking to UV shell. Positioning this right here. Scale that up a little bit, I'm trying to really pack that in. All right. Uh, let's do the same thing down here. Now, this piece and this piece. We can delete those. Now, there there really are just, like, notice we have this piece on the top here. So what what's happening is you this is inserting here, so we're going to get some baked shadows in there. And so what we can do is just grab these two here, shift right click, duplicate face, go to object mode. I'm holding control to deselect anything but those two. I'll center pivot between them, just pull them down here. So grabbing that one, grabbing this one here, and I'll just scale them both in a little. Let's hit F to focus. Just something like that. And then we have all of these unwrapped. So let's grab these two and this and this. Let's combine all of these. And let's do the same thing to this with our nifty new tool that we just remastered. So let's select here. Let's click here. Let's press enter. Let's go to face mode. Delete all these faces. And we're going to unwrap this the same way we did with the top of the oven. All right. So, ooh, look at that. That's a no-no. Let's hide everything for a second. Look at that inside, huh? This and this are not seen. Waste of geometry. And let's go ahead and just do what we did before. So, go to edge mode. Oh, actually, step one, map on Z. And go to edge mode. And let's go ahead and just, maybe it's easier in here. Grab these, hit Shift X. Move this off, unfold that. Notice we're getting that weird billowing thing. Double click this, hit unfold. Looks pretty good, not too bad. We got our side, so that's actually really good. And let's unwrap it down here so we know where to place it in our scene. Same thing as before, plane change here, Shift X. Let's see how that looks. It's still twisting up here like that, so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it wants me to really recognize that plane change there. So let's hit unfold. Boom. See, it's straight now. All right, let's line this up down here. 
So this is one way of doing it. If you did the sides as one continuously straight line, that's completely acceptable too. Um, those really are the two takeaways for me when I go to unwrapping. Um, and really, we should have did it for this part too. You know, instead of having this huge chunk up here, which really doesn't matter, but maybe we'll have points. Um, so what I'm going to do actually is just grab all of this and combine it. And go to UV mode and just grab this. And place it somewhere over here. Now you might be wondering, well, why are you leaving this dead zone here, right? And um, the reason for that is um, we, if I want to add pans and pots or like a tentacle arm or whatever, and I want to make this one continuous piece, I kind of leave a little bit of space, but I make sure everything else is super packed in. And even these, because you barely see them, I mean, I'm being way too liberal with the amount of space here that I'm giving this thing. Like, that's just, I mean, it's astronomically, that's, actually, I'm going to fix that. It's sort of bothering me. So I'm going to really pack this in this way. And anything on the front of the oven should have uh, more space, right? So like, for example, this side, you barely see it because it's going to be squished between cabinets. So it really doesn't need that much space. Same thing with this. Like, is it really that important? Are we going to have more knobs? I mean, maybe. I, I'll take these knobs and put them up there. Just Actually, I'm going to do that anyway. That, that's more visual interest now that I think about it. Even though it's not in my, my initial reference, I'm going to hold Shift. Oops. Uh, let's go to face mode and try that again. And then just duplicate face. Now here's something else I'm noticing too. Notice when I duplicate face, it appears down here. If you go to edit, um, or actually, let's see, shift right click. Let's go to face mode again, shift right click. Uh, oops, is it control right click? Yeah, shift right click, duplicate face. I really should have been from the beginning. Let's see if there's a setting. Um, hmm. I should have left that off, to be honest with you. And that way it makes it one object. But there's a setting I know when you duplicate special where you can merge it so that it always center, the pivot is at the center of the object. So anyway, let's um, go to object mode on this. Oops, whoa, look at me. I'm going nuts with that cut tool. Let's combine this, and then let's just put it up here. See how that looks. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I don't know, maybe something like this. Maybe this is an overkill. I don't know. I should because on modern ovens this would be a touch screen. All right. Um, let's separate again. Let's separate all the things one last time. So I'm going to separate these knobs, this handle this and I notice I'm not unwrapping the big chill because I'll probably just bake that on or paint it in I don't think it's necessary to have that as geometry I'm going to extract these faces notice that there's this and so with that said I'm going to make sure my transform is frozen and then I'm just going to shift this over here so that way when I need to bring it back I can just put it back on translate Z actually let's combine these to that guy So these are all the things that need to be flipped. Oops. I need to get that plane back to here. Let's extract that face. Center pivot. All right, so combine. And then I'm going to hit D to move this to the edge. Let's go to our front view. And then I'm going to go to Edit, and then Duplicate Special across the Y axis. Select both of these, combine them, go to Vertex Mode, Oh, what's going on here? Oh no, that looks good. It's just weird. 
and then let's uh, merge vertices. Shift right click, merge, merge vertices, and then let's see what our options are. We just want to double check that we don't get any weirdness like that. See how that snapped? So if you merge vertices like this, oops, and that's also under mesh, or I think it's edit mesh, or mesh tools rather, merge vertices. Here's average verts, chamfer. Not sure. Just uh, for the time being. Actually, let me see. Hold on. Yeah, it's here. It's merge, uh, mesh, edit mesh, merge. It's these. This is our merge vertices. All right. So what I can do. As you see my distance threshold, I want to be careful. So 0 0.001 maybe. And I want to be careful that as I look at this, 0 0.003, that we are just grabbing those verts. And looks like I forgot one, right? This piece here. And that's okay. What I'll do is just extract only that one piece. And then do the same thing. Hit D. Let's center pivot. Move it to the center here. Let's go to our front view. Same thing as before, just merging, but it looks pretty good. Like that's that threshold for something like this won't be too crazy. It's only when it's super detailed. And if I combine all of this, there is our oven. You know, some of this stuff kind of bothers me, like artistically, I kind of want to make this thinner so that it's not really overlapping that much. Maybe bring this whole front face down. But there's our oven unwrapped.